So hello everyone, welcome to the 12th lecture of this series. In this video, we are going to see about SFD that is shear force diagram and BMD which is bending moment diagram. So let's get started. And before we start, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button, drop me a comment and share this free program with anyone who might need it. So the first question is for the loaded beam shown in this figure, the correct shear force diagram is what? So for this dream, for this beam, since it is a simply supported beam, have to find the reactions. So reactions will be the total load is 2P and since they are symmetrical, I'm going to take that RA is equal to RB which is equal to 2P by 2. So my RA will be equal to P which will be equal to RB. So this is P. We have P acting here and P acting here. So if I look at my shear force diagram, so what is my sign convention? If I'm looking from the left side, upward is positive. If I'm looking from the right side, downward is positive. So I'm going to start from my left side. So it is upward, therefore it is positive. Next, I when I'm coming here, it is minus P because it is downward in direction. Therefore, it becomes zero. Then it will be constant till this point. And then again, it is minus P. Therefore, it will become something like this. Then when I come to this place, it will be plus P because upward is positive. Then it will become 0. So this, this represents option C. So answer is option C. Next question. For a simply supported beam shown in figure below, at what distance from the support A is the shear force 0? So from uh, the support A at a distance, the shear force is going to be 0. What is that uh, distance they are asking? So I need to, since it is a simply supported beam, I have to find RA, RB. And since it is a triangular load, I can say that RA, right, it takes care of this part of the load. Whereas RB will take care of this part of the load. That is, one third of the uh, load will be taken by RA and two third will be taken by RB. So uh, this is something I use to solve it in a uh, few seconds. But if you are using your way, it is okay. You can go by the conventional way. So I'm going to use my way here. So RA is equal to the total load acting is, since it is a triangular load, it will be the area of the triangle. So half into uh, width of the triangle is L into height of the triangle is W. And I know RA will take care of this part of the load. Therefore, this is one third. So I'm going to take one third of the total load, W L by 6. This is my RA. So I'm I have to find at which point, say this is my point, at this point, at an x distance, shear force is going to be 0. So I have to find what is that x distance. So let me take, a, uh, this is the whole triangle. So for a length of L, uh, the intensity is W. There, but for a length of x, what will be this value? So using your similar triangle, x into W by L. So this will be your uh, question mark, I'm sorry. So, it is x, it is x into w by l. Finding the shear force at a distance of x from the uh, a point. So, it is equal to, shear force is equal to, ra will be acting upwards. So, it is something like this, right? So, ra will be acting upwards at a distance of x. We are assuming that it will be 0. So, we have already found what is uh, the uh, intensity at this point from this diagram. So, the shear force will be RA, which is upward in direction, therefore it is positive. What is my RA value? It is WL by 6. And this is in uh, downward direction, therefore it is negative. So, negative of the whole, what will be the shear force acting here? So, the force will be equal to area of this triangle. The area of this triangle is half into, with this X, into height is X into W by L. So, on solving this, I know that the shear force has to be 0. So, I can equate this to 0. 0 is equal to WL by 6 minus, therefore, X is equal to L by root 3. So, my answer is option D. Going to the next question. For being shown in the figure, the maximum positive bending moment is equal to the maximum negative bending moment. Then the value of L1 is what? So, uh, our beam is something like this. It, ha it is an overhanging beam at both the sides of equal length. So, there, the bending moment of this beam will be something like this. We have already, we would have already learned it. So, it will be something like this. 
So this is my negative bending moment. This is my positive bending moment. So what I'm saying is this negative bending moment is equal to my positive bending moment. In that case, what is the value of my L1? So first let us find this negative bending moment. It is very easy to find. So we have to find moment about this point and since this is an you know overhanging part it is very easy to find. So the negative bending moment I can just simply write. So since the intensity is W, W into the length it is acting on is L1 into L1 by 2. So this will be my negative bending moment which will be W L square by so this is my negative bending moment. I have to equate it with the uh, positive bending moment. So coming to what is our positive bending moment. So what is RA? RA is equal to RB is equal to total load by 2. Right? Because it is symmetrical. So what is my total load? My total load is W into uh, since it is a UDL W into the length it has been spread the length has been divided into L1 L and L1 so I can say W into L1 into L I mean L1 plus L plus L1 by 2 this is my RA I have to find my positive bending moment right so what is my bending moment so this uh, this positive bending moment it will happen at the span of L by 2 only. So I have to find the moment at L by 2. Let me say take this as C. So I have to find moment at C. So what will be my moment at C? It will be RA into L by 2. This one positive minus the bending moment due to UDL. So it is W into L1 plus L by 2 into L1 plus L by 2 divided by 2. It is simply like if I have to find the bending moment of this whole section it will be say this is L and this is W. It will be W into L into L by 2. Here L is nothing but L1 plus L by 2. This will be my positive bending moment. So if my positive bending moment is equal to negative bending moment, what is my negative bending moment? It is, so it is W L1 square by 2. I'm sorry here this must be W L1 square. So W L1 square by 2 is equal to W L square by 8 minus W L square by 2. So on substituting it, if I bring uh, this to this side, it will become 2 root 2. So my option D is the correct answer. Going to the next question, the maximum bending moment due to moving load on a fixed end beam occurs due to what? So if it is a fixed end beam, it is simply something like this. So due to the fixed ends, there will all already be moments present uh, at the ends. So imagine if I have a fixed end and uh, the moving, I mean the moving loads are kept in the fixed end. It is kept here, here, here. So if it is kept near the support, already I have moments in my support. If it is kept near my support, then uh, there will be more uh, moment produced. So that is your answer. Next question. The, a beam is subjected to a constant bending moment along its length. Then the shear force will what? So let us, uh, in what cases the bending moment will be same? Let me take a cantilever beam. So in a cantilever beam, if I am applying a moment here, then uh, the um, if I draw my BMD, it will be something like this. From the support means, it will be something like this. It will be just a minus M. That will be your value for BMD. Whereas if you look at your uh, shear force diagram, this is your bending moment diagram. If you look at your shear force diagram, it will be zero because there are no vertical forces acting here. The only vertical force is A here and if we, summit, uh, if we sum up all the vertical forces, this will end up as zero. The only moment is acting. Therefore, it will be something like this. So in this case, shear force will be zero at all sections along the beam. So this is part one of this video. The part two will be in the next video. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video with the other five questions.